Good afternoon. I'm Alberto Bonanno from a, a Italian Institute of, Te of Technology and today I will talk to you about uh, the Micro for Nano uh, that is a project that deals uh, uh, with uh, uh, nanotechnology merged uh, with uh, microelectronics. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction on what is a, a nanomaterial, a nanosensor and what is uh, our Micro for Nano approach. Uh, uh, I began with uh, uh, what is a, a nanomaterial. It's a material that has uh, at least one dimension in the nanometer scale. So it uh, could be uh, the length or at least the diameter of uh, the, na uh, the uh, nanomaterial that is uh, some tenths of a nanometer or at least uh, uh, hundreds of nanometers. And uh, uh, each nanomaterial has uh, its own uh, characteristics uh, that can change uh, depending on the synthesis process, depending on, so on the atomic structure, if we think about the uh, carbon nanotube, but also, uh, of course, uh, depending on the dimension of this uh, nanomaterial. Some nanomaterial uh, uh, behaves uh, like uh, sensors because uh, they interact with the object at nanoscales and so we can call them nanosensors. So uh, in this image uh, you can see that uh, a nanowire, so a wire that has a diameter in the order of nanoscale, um, interacts with a uh, specific DNA um, uh, sequence. And so this, this wire can be used as a DNA sensor. Uh, um, the advantage to use this nanomaterial as a sensor um, uh, is uh, in uh, the high ratio of the sensing surface, so the surface of the nanomaterial, uh, in relationship with the uh, dimension of the uh, material. So if we think about the um, nanowire, the uh, surface uh, of the nanomaterial is really uh, the sensing area and so uh, the uh, sensitivity to the um, ob uh, object, to the substance at uh, nanoscales is really high compared to the total dimension, total dimension of the material. And then uh, we can conceive also to um, functionalize uh, uh, the nanowire, so add some specific link uh, to specific object, uh, mm, creating uh, a new generation of sensor, for example, protein or gases sensors using nanomaterial. Uh, uh, moreover, the small dimension of this uh, uh, sensor um, help us to conceive uh, a large number of sensors in a single device. These are only some uh, uh, examples of a sensor uh, that can be used uh, for energy, for uh, uh, chem uh, chemistry, for uh, electronics, for um, uh, light sensors, uh, or biosensor in general. In particular, I will focus on uh, uh, passive nanomaterials uh, that can be used for sensing. So they are characterized by a resistance and a capacitance that change uh, depending on the uh, sensing properties. So uh, if the nanomaterial, if a nanowire um, is in contact with a, a specific um, uh, object at a nanoscale, uh, its uh, resistance and capacitance change and the, the deviation from the base value um, um, is a, uh, represents the nanosensor sensi sensitivity to that object. And uh, um, if we talk about uh, uh, um, uh, zinc oxide nanowires, that is a uh, semiconductor nanowires, uh, it can be modelized as a, a resistance and a capacitance, a total resistance, a total capacitance, that is um, uh, constituted by three main contribution. One that is a base uh, resistance and capacitance that depends on the synthesis process. Uh, um, a, a second contribution that depends on the parasitics uh, or uh, uh, temperature variation during the sensing. 
and the third one that represents the real sensing process. Uh, but this third factor, factor can, uh, uh, can be only 1% uh, or 2% of the uh, total resistance capacitance. And this means that the, the signal that is a current in the range of uh, uh, pico or nano or at maximum microampere can be uh, affected by noise uh, during the measurement. So the, the idea is to uh, reduce it, uh, as much as possible the noise of the environment and uh, um, mainly the uh, coupling noise at the interface. The idea is to merge the nanomaterial together with the electronics. In that, uh, in that way, uh, you can uh, 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 cut the, um, uh, noise, the coupling noise at the interface because the nanosensor is in contact with your electronics. And uh, the metal layer of the CMOS technology is used to, to uh, drive the, the signal of uh, the nanosensor uh, towards the readout circuit that is uh, at the bottom of the uh, sensor. In that way, we can uh, uh, conceive a, a platform that uh, integrates, integrates an array of uh, uh, nanosensors. Uh, they can be uh, the same uh, nanomaterial, uh, the sensor based on the same nanomaterial, and you can perform average measurement and so increase the reliability of your system. Or you can conceive also to uh, a, a platform that integrates different nanomaterial and so different sensor in a single device. Uh, our approach is to interface each nanosensor with a, uh, a single uh, readout circuit. In that way, we can uh, um, achieve the best performance in terms of a signal to noise ratio. And uh, um, exploiting uh, some uh, uh, ultra low power technology uh, like impulse radio ultra wideband, we can uh, uh, realize, we can create a wireless platform that is uh, low power and uh, uh, mobile. What are the challenges of this approach? Uh, they regard mainly the uh, integration factor. So if you want to integrate a large number of nanosensors on the same device, uh, you, you have to conceive a, uh, ele um, an electronic interface that is small and low power, because you um, integrate a large number of uh, uh, readout circuit in a small area, and so you increase the, um, uh, the, power, the, the power of a selected area. Uh, and then, uh, since the um, nano, uh, nanomaterial uh, have a large process variation during synthesis or even during the assembly uh, to the um, metal electrodes, uh, you have to conceive a, um, an a readout circuit that can cover a wide range of resistance and capacitance. So uh, now I, I will go deeply uh, in uh, technology and uh, technological details uh, of the process and uh, I will show you uh, what, what are the main approach in literature to integrate nanomaterial with uh, uh, metal electrodes and then to electronics. Uh, for example, uh, basic approach is a uh, st uh, stochastic approach. Uh, you, you have a, um, an interdigitated uh, electrode, um, and then you, you drop your nanomaterial ar all around uh, this area. To succeed, to, have, um, to succeed in this integration, you need uh, a large metal uh, area, or a high number of uh, nano, uh, nanomaterial. Uh, another approach is to, uh, to have a, a, a nanomaterial growth directly in situ, directly on the top of uh, your electrodes. But this implies chemical process at fixed temperature um, using uh, um, uh, probably uh, fixed uh, and uh, defined uh, um, chemical compounds that probably are not compliant with the CMOS technology. So 
can be a solution for integrate uh, uh, in nanomaterial uh, in an um, off chip uh, um, device, but not in uh, CMOS uh, uh, technology. The third one is the uh, dilatrophoresis technique. It means that you apply an AC signal uh, to your uh, metal electrodes and you generate a non uniform electric field that attract uh, your uh, nanomaterial towards the um, uh, integration area, so towards your uh, metal electrodes. And uh, um, this force, uh, this uh, dielectric force, can be uh, repulsive or attractive depending on the frequency. So you can select also where you want to attract your nanomaterial all around your uh, uh, sensor uh, array, or your uh, metal electrode array. This is an example of uh, the uh, effectiveness uh, of this technique is a um, uh, work published in uh, Nature that uh, uh, um, described the integration of uh, uh, 16,000 of uh, nanowire on uh, a single device. This is not, uh, uh, this is not uh, done uh, on uh, uh, CMOS electronics but show the advantage, the sim simplicity of uh, this approach. And uh, um, there are attempts, uh, there are in literature uh, attempts to integrate nanomaterial on directly on top of CMOS technology. This is a uh, uh, work um, um, uh, done uh, about 10 years ago on uh, CMOS uh, technology, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, approach uh, I uh, in this uh, paper is described a te technology that is uh, probably 300, uh, 305, uh, uh, 350 uh, nanometer technology. Uh, you need uh, a high voltage for uh, the electrophoresis. And uh, uh, if you um, have uh, the metal electrodes con directly connected to your uh, electronics, you, uh, you damage your readout circuit. So in this uh, uh, work, they, uh, they do post-assembly metallization to, to connect the electrodes to the uh, uh, readout circuit. But this imply additional masks, additional lithographic mask, and so uh, additional costs. Uh, recently, um, another uh, uh, group tried to integrate uh, um, carbon nanotube on the top of uh, CMOS technology and uh, succeeded to integrate 60 nano, uh, nano wires, 60 um, uh, nano sensor on uh, a single device. But these uh, nano sensors are connected to a single readout circuit. It means that they have to acquire the information using time multiplexing uh, uh, technique. So um, they don't have a real time monitoring of the wall, uh, readout, uh, of the wall uh, nanosensor array. Our approach is to integrate uh, uh, each nanosensor with uh, a single rock to implement a real time monitoring of uh, uh, the nanosensor. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, it is uh, our micro for nano uh, process flow. We receive uh, the, um, the micro for nano chip, the chip designed in uh, 130 CMOS technology, uh, 130 nanometer CMOS technology. Uh, and uh, we receive the chip with a passivation layer on the top. So the first, um, we, have, we have to assess to the to al aluminum top electrodes here that are designed for uh, nanosensor integration. So we have to remove, as, as uh, first step, we have to remove the passivation layer using a reactive ion etching. We have to protect during the process the uh, bond wire using a resin. And then uh, um, uh, we have uh, exposed the aluminum electrodes to the air. And so immediately after some minutes, 
the electrode uh, will oxidize. Um, the, um, uh, the important is to uh, remove the, the second step, remove the aluminum oxi oxidize, um, and uh, metallize the electrodes uh, using gold, for example, or other noble metal to avoid uh, future oxidation. Um, this uh, process uh, is uh, performed using commercial uh, um, solution, and so uh, in house uh, uh, gold metallization process costs uh, uh, around uh, less than one euro per chip per sample. So it is sustainable. Uh, the, um, uh, then the, the chip is uh, ready for uh, the nano sensor integration. So a dro uh, drop of uh, uh, solution uh, con uh, containing uh, uh, nano wire is uh, deposited on top of the, silic of the silicon chip, and uh, the dielectrophoresis is, is enabled. Uh, you can see here there is a, a circuit that is on chip that uh, drive the integration of the nano, uh, the nano wire. Then uh, you have to wait the complete evaporation of the, of the uh, solution, of the solvent, and you have the nanowire assembled on the top. This is a, a micro photograph of the chip. You, you can see that uh, there are eight elements in the array. Each element is composed by three couple of uh, uh, electrodes and three um, readout circuits and a single uh, and a dielectrophoresis circuit sorry dielectrophoresis circuit to drive the integration uh, using this uh, uh, small uh, system on chip uh, you can uh, uh, you can see the the, the area is uh, really small and you can uh, estimate to have uh, about uh, 100 of nano sensor per millimeter okay Uh, what about the electronics that has to be designed uh, uh, to read out the nanomaterials, uh, the nanosensor signal? Um, the, the main constraints regards power, area, signaling at the interface that has to be digital to reduce the complexity of a, a um, readout circuit array. And then it has to cover a wide range of resistance and capacitance with a, a measurement error uh, below 1% and uh, a signal to noise ratio uh, uh, at least of uh, 40 dB. Uh, our approach is uh, a little bit different as uh, already mentioned by Danilo and uh, other colleagues. Uh, it, it is not standard. We don't uh, uh, do uh, we don't do um, DC measurement and then convert the uh, the signal to uh, uh, analog voltage and then uh, convert to uh, a digital domain using uh, ADC. We uh, we use our nano device, our nano sensor as part of uh, an oscillator, and so. Uh, the, mm, this oscillator uh, behaves as a, a quasi-digital converter. So the output is a, a bit of uh, is a signal of one bit, but the um, the information is converted in the time domain. So the the period of this uh, uh, signal or the um, uh, the duration of uh, um, uh, logic one or logic zero carry the information. And so uh, it is compliant with the commercial electronics and uh, uh, to, to per implement uh, standard uh, signal processing, you can uh, uh, implement a time to digital converter uh, in a microprocessor uh, uh, environment, for example. And this is uh, the interface between a microcontroller with uh, our micro for nano chip. Uh, all the, the signal are digital. Uh, the microcontroller uh, drive the um, dielectrophoresis uh, uh, phase, so the integration phase, and uh, the readout phase. And this is an example of uh, a quasi-digital uh, converter. Uh, 
um, uh, I have to mention a, another uh, a challenge because uh, when you integrate your nanosensor and uh, your nanomaterial is not symmetric, uh, um, you cannot decide uh, which kind of uh, uh, IV curve, uh, which kind of quadrant of the IV curve uh, you are monitoring. So your readout circuit has to change the polarity of the signal that stimulates your, your uh, material to exploit the uh, sensitivity of the nanomaterial in the first or third quadrant of the IV curve. So this circuit do that, convert the uh, resistance and the capacitance of the nanowire, can distinguish the, uh, the two contributes of the nanowire, uh, and convert it uh, to a digital signal of one bit. The, uh, the power consumption is uh, 15 microwatts. And uh, uh, if you can uh, imagine to integrate uh, 100 of these uh, circuits in, the, in your uh, uh, device, um, together with uh, 100 of nanosensors, uh, your device consumes only one milliwatt. The entire that and uh, it works uh, continuously. Uh, using uh, quasi digital uh, output, you can uh, uh, conceive also and you can integrate this concept uh, uh, with uh, the bio, uh, bio inspired uh, um, system that uh, Paolo has already uh, shown you. So, uh, the uh, AER protocol. Uh, encode uh, the event, that is uh, a rising age of your uh, quasi-digital signal, to uh, um, an address. So uh, you can uh, easily process the, um, the stream of uh, uh, all uh, uh, quasi-digital converter to a single bus. Of course, uh, you can have also uh, an event collision during this, uh, um, this uh, process, but uh, if, uh, since we, uh, we are interested on the time between one event k and uh, the uh, following event k, we, uh, we can say also that uh, it is impossible to have a, a, a dramatically increase, in, um, sudden increase of uh, uh, time tk. We can uh, uh, distinguish that is an outlier value and so we can uh, uh, perform average measurement and we can uh, measure the right uh, value of TK. Um, what are the future applications of this uh, uh, platform? At the moment, we, we integrated uh, our microphone nano chip uh, that is now bonded on a uh, uh, board um, uh, and then uh, connected to a shield and uh, to a microcontroller board to, uh, uh, to conceive, uh, to uh, perform a portable uh, CMOS um, platform for nanosensing. The application is defined by the nanosensor that we integrate uh, on, the, on the top of a uh, uh, micro for nano chip. Uh, if, for example, we, uh, we use this, uh, um, we integrate uh, uh, zinc oxide nanowires and we use the platform as a UV sensor. And we can say this is the um, uh, information encoded in a time domain that uh, uh, converts uh, irradiance uh, to time. But uh, uh, in in uh, in US or in Israel, the, uh, there are a group that invest a lot on this uh, kind of sensor array, and uh, they they, per they conceive a gas sensor for um, uh, breath, so um, uh, that behaves uh, like an electronic nose that can even be connected to an iPhone. So. The imagination uh, can drive our uh, choice. And so uh, open your mind and uh, try to conceive a new generation of uh, uh, sensor based on nanomaterial and integrate it uh, with uh, microelectronics. Thanks for.